So I will call to order the uh, 16th of April 2019 meeting for the Board of Trustees of the Batavia Public Library District. If everyone would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Blodgett, Tulata, Beachman, here. Garrett, here. Anders, here. Mackenzie, Smith, here. Uh, do we have any comments from the audience? Okay. Uh, we have a number of items on the consent agenda. We have the minutes from our meeting of the 19th of March, expenditures. Uh, an ordinance, ordinance transferring accumulated interest from the board and interest fund to the library fund. An ordinance closing out the bond and interest fund and transferring the balance of the bond and interest fund to the special reserve fund. The group medical insurance, uh, new accounting software, the employee engagement survey, and the technology plan. Does anybody wish to remove any of those from the consent agenda? Okay, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. <coughs> so moved. Second. Thank you, Kate. Uh, oh, uh, that's our roll call vote, oh, I believe. Yes. Blodgett, Kalana, Deachman. Aye. Garrett. Aye. Henders. Aye. Mackenzie. Smith. Aye. All right, and I need a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. Move to approve the agenda. Second. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Kate. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, all right, the first item on our agenda is a resolution recognizing a library leader. Rich. Ah uh, yes, my pleasure to uh, to report uh, that uh, at the last meeting of the outreach committee, uh, a decision was made to forward for full board consideration uh, a the recommendation for the uh, recipient in 2019 of the Library Leader Award, uh, which has been given on a on a sem you know, uh, somewhat recurring basis. Uh, and uh, is is being recognized this year, and the recommendation is that the uh, library leader for 2019 be uh, Daniel Arbuso. Thank you, uh, Joanne. Would you read the resolution for us? The resolution recognizing and honoring Daniel R. Russo as a library leader. Whereas Daniel R. Russo believes that the library is the key element of Batavia's quality of life which along with an excellent school system, makes this community attractive to long time and prospective new residents alike. And whereas Daniel is a long time friend and passionate supporter of the Batavia Public Library and the friends of the Batavia Public Library. And whereas Daniel served the community for many years as an exemplary educator and learning resource center director at Batavia High School, where he was instrumental in creating an atmosphere for students that implemented state-of-the-art technology, literature, and resources that support, supported learning. And whereas, in that capacity, he was an active participant on the library's One Book, One Batavia Planning Committee from 2003, its first year, through 2017, when he retired as LRC director. And whereas Daniel was an enthusiastic supporter of One Book, One Batavia, one remarkable high highlight of which in March 2006 <clears throat> was a series of presentations by Lois Lowry, author of The Giver. And whereas Daniel is a longtime member of the Friends of the Batavia Public Library, a major sponsor of One Book, One Batavia, and whereas he served the Friends as a member and officer of its executive committee, which became its board of directors, in which capacity he helped to create new bylaws, incorporate the group as an Illinois not-for-profit organization, and gain 501c3 tax-exempt status as a charitable organization in support of the library, and <laughs> whereas Daniel served seven years from 2006 until 2013 as president of the Friends Board, 
during which time he was instrumental in both formalizing and building upon the long-standing and mutually beneficial relationship between the library and the Friends. And whereas the following initiatives, above and beyond annual grants to the library, were brought to fruition during his tenure as president. An agreement in February 2007 to ensure that the Alphabet Garden continued to thrive and remain attractive. A five-year agreement in September 2009 to sponsor and provide financial support for a Young Friends public program or event for children in the fall of each year from 2009 until 2013. <clears throat> and an agreement in May 2012 to develop and operate the book sale areas known as the Friend Space on the lower level and the book sale corner near the checkout desk, mainly to provide fi uh, private financial support for the library, clarify issues related to donations of books and other materials, and establish guidelines for contributions to the library. And whereas the Board of Library Trustees authorized in July 2017 the formation of a citizen committee to research opportunities for the library to improve its services and develop a set of recommended goal statements pertaining to those opportunities, opportunities for the board's consideration. And whereas Daniel served as co-chair of this broad-based coalition of community members, trustees, and staff members, which was known as the Speak Up facility, Facilitating Team. And whereas the series of four Speak Up community engagement sessions that resulted from the work of this facilitating team engaged stakeholders in meaningful dialogue and discussion, solicited stakeholder hopes, ideas, and suggestions, and resulted in a set of recommendations to aid in developing a long-range plan for the library. And whereas the Speak Up recommendations were incorporated into and made part of the library's strategic plan, and whereas in July 2018, as a direct result of the work and recommendations of the Speak Up Community Engagement Initiative, the Board of Library Trustees voted unanimously to place a zero tax rate change proposal on the November ballot. And whereas Daniel, as Chair of Citizens for Batavia Public Library, took on the challenge of ensuring the community's financial support of the library, culminating in a successful zero tax rate change referendum to increase the library's tax rate for operations by seven cents, which is offset when the tax rate for paying off construction bonds, slightly more than seven cents, was eliminated. And whereas the library staff was retired in December 2018 and the overall tax rate for residents remained the same, 44 cents, and whereas the revenue will be used to implement the Speak Up recommendations by responding to changing technology and sustaining current programs, staffing, collections, and hours of operation, and whereas most importantly, the funds will be used to maintain the community's investment in the library's nearly 20-year-old building and site by systematically addressing long-term maintenance needs, which are identified in the library's capital asset plan, and creating a consistent long-term revenue stream to fully fund the library's special reserve fund, which by law is restricted to capital projects. And whereas Daniel has demonstrated community-based visionary thinking and an ongoing commitment to the mission of the Batavia Public Library, and whereas Daniel has made a positive contribution to the library, through a substantial contribution of time, commitment to work, and volunteer involvement, and whereas Daniel, through a clear vision of the future, true leadership, and a stalwart commi commitment to success, has helped change the library for the better. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Library Trustees of the Batavia Public Library District, Batavia, Illinois, in the counties of Kane and DuPage, Illinois, as follows. Daniel R. Russo is hereby named a library leader. In recognition whereof, the name of Daniel R. Russo shall be inscribed in the Book of Library Leaders, which is displayed at the entrance to the library leader's reading room. Thank you. <laughs> 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 
Uh, I need a motion to approve this resolution. Vote. Thank you, Rich. I'll second. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, and we need a voice vote for this, please. Blanchett, Colada. Aye. Beachman. Aye. Garrett. Aye. Tenders. Aye. McKenzie. Smith. Aye. Excellent. All right. So the resolution passes. And yes. I was going to say, we have a copy of this for you, Daniel, but uh, we. We don't have it right the second. We'll have it at the end of the meeting. <laughs> but but uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, all right. Item number eight is board education. So we, um, George sent out the email uh, as part of the um, per capita grant. We need to we continue to do board education and. Uh, Last time we talked about uh, watching the video, Successful Libraries for Uncertain Times. Uh, and so George sent out the link for us to watch that, especially the summary in the beginning, and then the rest of it possible. Did everybody get a chance to look at that? Does anybody have any comments about it or discussion? That was pretty well done, so. I thought it was very well done. Two things caught my attention. Yeah. One was, don't ask library-centric questions of the community. Get them involved in, in other ways. It's not always, you know, about what's going on at the library. And the other was to create mutualistic relationships um, with other uh, community entities. And so I thought those were both um, very good. Okay, that was well done. There's a lot of uh, items on there that we could uh, come up with. So. The uh, management team uh, at two consecutive meetings watched. Uh, the whole thing. Okay. And, uh, looking at ways to, you know, pursue some of the ideas. So, is there anything other things that particularly Dr. Trustees would be happy to hear your input? Okay. So. All right. Item number nine is financial reports. Uh, good evening. Uh, one comment on the this year's budget um, in the projected uh, column at the very end on the second page. Um, I'm going to highlight what uh, possibility that we would send over to the Special Reserve Fund this year, which includes the amount that is budgeted, which is about $126,000. Um, there's a $139 extraordinary revenue piece that's the link um, closing that we got the funds for. There's about $300,000 that you approved coming out of the bond fund that will then go over there. And given the way we're running under budget at this time, another couple hundred thousand, so we're going to be somewhere between seven, eight hundred thousand dollars total going over to the special reserve this year. So, mm -hmm. um, Good. our goal is to uh, get it to six hundred thousand. So. And next year's budget actually uh, has that six hundred thousand in there, still working on getting that finalized at this point too. And then the final is thank you for the vote on the software. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. yeah, that was needed. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Joe? Um, President's report. Uh, one of the first things we need to do is appoint a special committee on nominations. As everybody knows, we had uh, elections last, well, earlier this month. I was trying to think of when that was. It was only April 2nd. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody in the community for participating in the election. We're going to have uh, two new trustees, which I'm very excited about. So I'm, I'm looking forward to having you all on the board and doing the amazing job I know you will. Um, so I need a couple of people to be on the committee for nominations to come up with our slate of candidates for next year. And Kate, you said you'd be willing to do it. Joanne, okay. Do you need another person? Not necessarily. Okay. If you, if you did. But. Uh, two or three. So. Two or three, so. If you, uh, okay. Oh, I was late. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 You got me um, because you were late. Joanne. I got what else did I get? Made, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you chair that then and set up the meeting? Yes. So we'll just need to, uh, you'll need to come up with a slate of candidates before the next board meeting. So you have a little bit of time. Uh, and then that, that candidate list will be on the, on the slate. And then uh, that'll be one of the first things the new board does is select officers. So. Uh, yeah, the, during the transition meeting at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Right. Sure. Is it just for the slate of officers or is it also for the committees? It won't be for the committees, it'll be for the slate of officers and the official representatives on the other board. Gotcha. So okay. Friends, BATV, yeah. Okay. Um, and then once 
that's set because the president and treasurer have certain roles they fill on committees, and then from that we can figure out the other committee. Gotcha. The president will ask who wants to lead on the other committees. So. And uh, do keep uh, minutes because uh, it is actually covered by the meeting is covered by the Open Meetings Act. So. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have for President's report. Item 11 is good news and comments from the board. Does anybody have anything they want to share? I'm just going to reiterate what I said last month. <laughs> I want to be boring. But um, the One Book, One Batavia event <coughs> has been ongoing uh, since the last board meeting. In fact, the, the fifth of five um, presentations uh, was this past Monday. And it, 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 I guess, in my opinion, the, the best set of um, One Book, One Batavia events that, that we've had. It's all been very, very good. Awesome. Very well attended, too. Yeah, they've been full, right? Very well attended. They've been yeah. very well attended. I'm sure mm -hmm. Stacy will be telling us more about that. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Uh, correspondence and communication. There's nothing in there. I was going to say, I don't think we had anything on that. Um, then directors and librarians reports. Okay. The uh, written report is in the packet. Um, in terms of uh, Stacy, will talk about the new Lyceum lecture series that's coming up uh, in June. This is actually, or she and she may not be, but if you if she isn't, uh, there's some information in here for the next event, which is on June 4th, the last one for the current season, uh, I think. And uh, ask, uh, tell us if you want a ticket for that. Uh, it looks very interesting. And I was uh, able to give you of uh, my next column in Neighbors, uh, An Appetite for Content. Um, that's a different view on downloadables and things like that. So. Okay. Uh, otherwise, I think Stacy and Joanne have a lot of good things to talk about. So. All right. Hi, Joanne. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to highlight a couple things from my report this evening, talking about communities and getting out into the community um, and things that we're doing in the community. We have several things coming up during the next month. This Saturday, uh, Jen Conan and Mary Stuskel will be doing a story time down at the Egg Hop that the Main Street is putting on down at the Peg Bond Center. So that uh, we participated in that for the last two years. So this is our third year doing that. So uh, hope for nice weather and down at the Peg Bond Center. And that's always a fun time. Uh, Jolene is in the process of writing a, a Rails partnership grant. She has worked with teachers at uh, the Early Childhood Center at Alice Gustafson School to request a $3,000 grant um, for resources, materials, um, accessible resources, visits from the, the uh, preschool there um, to help children with special needs. So that grant goes in this week, so we'll hopefully that partnership uh, will be able to be funded through that. Um, we are also hosting the Batavia School District 101 Battle of the Books, final at the Battle of the Books on April 29th. Um, that always is a great fun time. Our meeting room is usually filled with uh, children and their parents all answering questions. So Amanda's going to be hosting that again. And in May, we are partnering with um, Mr. Gary Holm from the Batavia um, Public Works Department. He's going to come and do story time here with one of our staff. He's bringing a truck with, and the kids can climb in the truck. So that should be a lot of fun. So some of those partnerships, um, really, uh, we really certainly enjoy those. In May, Amanda will also be visiting all the Batavia Elementary Schools to talk about Summer Reading Club. And speaking of Summer Reading Club, mm -hmm. this year our theme is it's showtime at your library. Um, children will be getting log books at school, and if they don't attend a Batavia school, you can come into the library to get one. May 30th through August 5th are the dates for Summer Reading Club, um, and it should be a good time. We have over 90 programs again planned this summer, so we have a schedule full of programs and interesting contests. And for some of those programs and 
happenings for your summer reading club, we could use some junior volunteers. So I'm putting a plug out to BATV, um, junior volunteers for students in grades going into grade six, seventh and eighth grade next year um, can volunteer at the library. We have several options for junior volunteers. Um, applications are both online on the website as well as in-house and deadline for applications is May 18th. And it is a great way for students to get those, if they haven't done a lot of volunteering, entering volunteer work mode or, and they have three different options and it's really great. They can read with younger children, help with special events, and we have several of them that they can help with, or just come in weekly and, and volunteer. So that's a great opportunity. And then one last thing I wanted to share with you, you might be interested to know that this month is a special month for Born to Read. 10 years ago this month, we gave away our first Born to Read back. So our first Born to Read recipient is 10 years old at this time. Um, and we, have, we are very thrilled about that, the Born to Read committee. Maureen Jakubowski and I went to the Rotary Club this past week and spoke to them. We kind of gave them um, an update because they had given us a gift recently. And there's still so much enthusiasm about um, children and early and the importance of early literacy. So we are very proud that our Born to Read program is still going on 10 years um, after it was initiated. Maureen Jakubowski was a board of trustee member at that time and was uh, instrumental in bringing that program um, and getting the ball rolling with Born to Read. And almost, I don't know, kind of a fun thing what was very nice is this month also, we had a very new sponsor come on board for Born to Read. Um, the Batavia Women's Club, their home life and education um, group uh, gave us a donation and now has come on board to help as a, be a sponsor of Born to Read as well. So we're very proud of Born to Read and very happy of that it's been 10 years and, and so is going, so. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Hi, Stacy. Um, I have five items that I'm going to do as a lightning round. Um, <laughs> first, um, one book, one Batavia. Um, we had a wonderful year this year. Librarian Lee Blakely put together a fantastic set of programs. Uh, our lowest attendance was 35. At the first, word got out, <laughs> brought friends. Last night, we had over 50. We had 140 people for the author, 71, 65. The numbers were way up there. One of the NASA uh, ambassadors said, you get more people in Batavia than I see in Schomburg. So <laughs> that was exciting to hear. Um, second item, tournament of books. Um, since we last met, we have a winner of this year's tournament of books. And it was actually written by a Batavian. Samir Ahmed's book, Love, Hate, and Other Filters, was our winner and um, we were delighted to see that that book came to the top. Um, third, our teen job and volunteering fair was a huge success. It drew 200 people here. It was a cooperative venture among the Tri-Cities Libraries along with Messenger Public Library of North Aurora um, and librarian Christine Edison who handles our, our teen services coordinated that event along with those other libraries and we were really delighted to have so many people attend. And we have a new deposit collection out there in the community. Um, Batavia Apartments contacted us, um, said they were interested, actually talked to Joanne who passed them along to me, um, that they were interested in having about 50 books in this newly redesigned space that they have in, in the community area. So um, Astrid Brown, one of our librarians, gathered up some books from the donations and we trucked them over there. So that's now in place. And finally, Preservation Week is next week. I'm gonna send these around. We are playing an active role. Um, li librarian Roseanne Freint, who puts together our Questions and Ancestors genealogy series, is our contact person, working along with the Historical Society, the Depot Museum, all the partners are listed on the back of this bookmark. Um, and we've got three events being held here at the library. And when Joanne mentioned earlier the Successful Libraries Program, and mutualistic relationships. One of the things that he mentioned was that our space is really valuable. And it's really great that on Monday and Wednesday, other organizations are sponsoring the events. As part of the series, we're providing space. 
And then the event on Tuesday about house history is the event that Roseanne is coordinating as part of our Questions and Ancestors series, which is also part of Preservation Week. So there's a great lineup of events next week. Um, the web address is here. If you Google Batavia Preservation Week 2019, you'll see that list of events as well. Any questions? So are, are there still, uh, it's not overbooked or not fully booked for any of that stuff here yet? There's still space. Excellent. Right. Unless some of the other group's events may have filled and I okay. may not be aware of that, but to my knowledge there's space available. Excellent. Okay. So, thanks. All right. Thank you. Final note, two final notes. Preservation Week uh, is a, a national event that was started by a division of ALA a number of years ago and I think Batavia uh, uh, with, and the collaborative partners involved with it in Batavia have taken it to a whole different level, which I think is very exciting. And uh, as uh, usual, uh, the appendix to the director's report is an uh, update on uh, uh, my goals that the board approved uh, for this year and uh, new or revised uh, items or statements are uh, indicated with a star so that uh, it's easier to find them. But uh, if you ever have any questions on any of that, uh, it may be more detailed than you want, but this, this is the first year for the new, uh, for the new uh, <coughs> action uh, plan, so I'm, I'm uh, Hurrying on the side with more information. <laughs> okay. Excellent, thank you. Uh, committee reports. Uh, facilities, Joanne. Facilities met on uh, April 4th, and um, three items were discussed. Uh, the first was um, purchasing some office uh, furniture for. Kathy Mulker's new office downstairs that was approved and just went ahead and, uh, and did that. Uh, the second was approving the um, technology plan, which we put on the consent agenda. So that also just kind of went through. And the third um, is the, the issue downstairs by the door where come in off the parking lot downstairs and the puddling that, that happens there during rainstorms and trying to figure out what the cause of that puddling is. It seemed to, it was there a little bit before the parking lot renovation. After the parking lot renovation, it has become worse. And uh, so we have FBTC to come out and uh, do an evaluation for us. Next time they're going to come out is the kind of trying to wait for a heavy rain <laughs> so that they can come out and actually observe the way the water is flowing. They have off offered some possible solutions uh, for this problem, but uh, the uh, facilities committee decided to wait before proceeding with any of those until we hear a little bit more from BTC. And if I may add, they did determine what the cause was. Oh, and right. that is that the, uh, uh, do you want to tell no, me? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay. The uh, construction, uh, the, the uh, <coughs> flow on a parking lot is determined by the concrete curbs and the, and the asphalt is actually installed based on the height of the base of the curbs. Uh, I'm saying this sitting next to an engineer who <laughs> knows more about this than I do. Uh, 17, 18 years ago when the building was in site was under construction, the circle uh, in the center of the drive uh, down below, uh, the curb was supposed to be uh, 4.8 inches lower than the building. Uh, it was constructed six inches higher than the base of the building, so there's a 10.8 inch differential which is causing the water uh, on the building side to flow toward the building instead of to flow away from the building. It actually flows okay on the other side. Uh, during the annual fire hydrant flushing recently, Kathy and I uh, were observing the uh, city out there uh, dumping uh, untold gallons of water into the driveway and that water which is on the other side of the circle was flowing very nicely 
to uh, into the parking lot, uh, the corner drain, and into the circle uh, drive drains, uh, and not coming toward the building at all. So it's just uh, somehow the side of the circle toward the building is the wrong height. And so the, the asphalt contractors uh, did nothing uh, incorrect in their installation. The actual problem occurred when the building was built. And uh, apparently, it may have gotten worse over the years because uh, the folks that were moved into the building have no particular memory of the, the level of, of issue that we have now. So, and there are several possible solutions. Uh, none of them are going to necessarily be inexpensive, but uh, ETC will come back with some additional uh, reports for us. Okay. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. George, anybody have any questions for them? Okay. Uh, finance? Yes, we did meet also in the first week of April, uh, April 2nd. We talked uh, about the ordinance for the interest in the bond and then the interest fund to be put into the special reserve, so that was on the consent agenda. Um, we also looked at some group medical insurance, which was also on the consent agenda, and then we talked a lot with Joe about the working budget. Um, and for 2019 and 2020 and the work that they're doing to get that ready. The new software. And the new software, though, which is on the consent yes. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the biggest one. That's right. Which we've been waiting for a yes. couple years to move forward with, so. Yes. All right, anybody have any questions for Jenny? All right, thank you. Uh, services, we also had a pretty full uh, committee meeting. We went over the recommendations from the speak up community engagement and worked with those into George's um, uh, goals and uh, moving those into our strategic plan moving forward. I don't think there's a copy of that in the packet. Right. The, uh, the revised uh, or updated, I should say, strategic right. plan has uh, had all the uh, speak up recommendations incorporated and made part of the plan document so we can track one document rather than multiple documents. Yeah, right. So the idea was to put it all in the same spot so it'll be easier to follow where we're going and make sure that we're doing the things that we want to do. Uh, we talked about employee satisfaction and engagement survey. Uh, we've got a found a consultant, Lisa found a consultant that uh, does this for um, this is the thing they do, so we found somebody that can help us with that. Um, staffing levels, we're trying to find a company that can help us determine what the appropriate staffing levels. Is there a update the on that? The RFP is, is on the street. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know, we have not gotten any uh, proposals back, but the deadline is April 30th. So. And have many people asked about it, or have you gotten any? Uh, you know, I'd have to ask, uh, Lisa had not said anything to one or the other and she was out of the office today at a, at a workshop so okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer. So the idea is to have somebody come in and help uh, help us figure out what the appropriate staffing levels are based on our current services and on if we want to expand our services what it would take to do that and trying to find a professional to help with that. Um, and those were the, actually the big three things. The employee satisfaction uh, and engagement survey I think is going to is going to be really good so we're looking forward to that. How yeah, and if I can just add, I was really impressed with Lisa's presentation. She put a lot of effort into trying to figure out the right way to do this. I know we, we changed this a lot. We changed George's goals a lot this year. We changed the employee. And part of that that came out of that was to assess how satisfied the employees are and really how content they are with their, with their roles. And, um, and that's not a, it was kind of a fluffy task we gave her. And she really made it concrete and found, um, went to this seminar and it was part of this membership um, that she's part of. So it just, it really, it, you could tell that she put a lot of effort into it and it, it looks like a really great tool that we're gonna be able to use for it. And one of the nice things about it, it's not just satisfaction, it's engagement. So how right. engaged are the employees? Mm -hmm. And, and the organization. So. And I think the key what you know, we all kind of thought of some questions that we could ask the employees and we can get the survey back and get the do a survey monkey, but then who's really qualified to classify what that meant and, and really get the results? And it's it's this organization. So they would not only help devise the survey for us, then they'll also analyze the results. 
And so that was really the other key thing that we were excited to get from this is the the results from that and what we can do with the with the with the information and how to explain that to all of the employees and to kind of get that word out. So it was really impressive. Yeah, and I thought was by using them instead of doing it in house we'll get better answers and mm -hmm. more uh, confidence that the answers are are confidential and that they're able mm -hmm. to say what they want to say. So yeah, it should be kind of added. That leads to the process. So. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that committee report? Services? Okay. The foundation meeting on April 4th was actually uh, canceled. Okay. Uh, so, no meeting, no report. No report. <laughs> All right, we did not do outreach. Uh, and then, Friends of the TV and Public Library, Joanne? The friends did meet. Uh, I have one item um, from the actual meeting to bring to the uh, trustees, and that is if um, you uh, are already a member and have not renewed your membership for this year, please, uh, I, have, I, have, I have a form for that, so I'll give you that. And any of you who are not currently friends, I have membership forms for you. So. Maybe see me uh, after the meeting and we'll get you involved. Um, the, one other item is they had their monthly book sale last Saturday. You might get tired of hearing me say <laughs> they, <laughs> they brought in $1,173.75. So Excellent. Another very, very successful book sale. Very impressive. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. BATV, Rich. Uh, just two items, uh, just internally, uh, they are looking at uh, options for hosting their website, uh, which they'll probably come to a conclusion on in a few months. Uh, and then just uh, some of the volunteers apparently for BATV need, needed to be uh, made aware of the procedures within the school because there had been a false uh, security concern uh, uh, prior to that last BATV meeting that they they just said that they needed to be able to make sure that everybody was aware of what the procedure was reporting in and so forth. So uh, just in lieu of the uh, the later concern that we had that that was more public, uh, this was just something that was you know more involved with the BATV. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? All right. Uh, future agenda items. We have a list here. Um, the let's see. The May meeting. Uh, so our our next May meeting is going to be a busy one because we're going to be we're going to be doing your review by then too, right? Mm -hmm. So we should get the review form out for everybody to look at that. So. That's coming out to end, uh, like tomorrow when Lisa's back. Okay, so Lisa, I'll send that to everybody. If you all could, in the next couple of weeks, take a look at that and get it back to me so I can uh, do it because we'll talk about it at the committee meeting. Remember, it's right. the new form. Yeah, that, right. uh, that it will. Uh, it's the 360, so right. going to not all just right. the, yeah, the trustees and the, my direct reports and then the peers. Okay. The right. And a, a full report will come back. Uh, Okay. To uh, the service committee. Well, the service committee, I think, is going to get a first at that. Yeah, so that's gives us well, two weeks. We're looking at you, but uh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, so that's a nice no, two weeks. Yes, okay. So we should have. We would like to get it back before the services committee meeting. So it's it's supposed to be because there's only one week. Uh, oh, there's one week turnaround. Right? Okay. So if you all keep an eye open for that and get it turned around, and then. Uh, Again, the May board meeting we'll kind of do in two halves. We do that first, and then we'll uh, close that meeting, and then start the second meeting with the new committee, with the new board. So, okay. Yeah, it's all spelled out in the report on future agenda items. It has uh, uh, some of the highlights of the meeting, but then it has the transition meeting uh, right. okay. agenda as well. So. Okay. So we'll do all of the normal stuff in the regular meeting, and then switch over to the. Okay. Your agenda. Okay, so we'll, we'll also have a closed session with them. 
It's uh, it's, uh, it's on page two of the of the future agenda items. Uh, so do we do the transition meeting first then? No, no, the trans okay, the, the, uh, the board okay. conducts its regular business first. Okay. And then um, the base of the standard agenda conducted by the current board. And then there's a the close then the close oh, I gotcha. session, okay. the close meeting for when you do my performance appraisal. Right. And the newly elected trustees uh, are there as observers. Okay. And then, uh, we do this. and then the then the transition agenda begins right after that. Okay. Uh, where the new trustees are qualified, and then the board is organized, and okay. we uh, recognize the trustees that are leaving. And all right. Sometime later in the night, we all go home. Yes. <laughs> that will probably be a long meeting. <laughs> so, welcome to the board. <laughs> It seems like whenever new trustees come uh -huh. over, like, they're it's like they're right. Right. Yeah. 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 You don't yeah. get these 45 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're scheduled till 1130. <laughs> 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 That's all the time. I that late. Oh, oh, there was yeah. that one time we did, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. I think that was just Mike and you and me when we toured the facility. Oh, maybe. It was oh. like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, so that's the future agenda, next meeting events, so we just talked about when those are. Uh, so that library board meeting is on the 21st. Uh, and that is all I have. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? I'll move to adjourn. Thank you, Joanne. Second. Second. <laughs> um, <laughs> all, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you very much, everybody. Good to you.